So now here's the lead. Here's the um, EKG, and we're using two different strips. So two different leads. It's the same heartbeat, but just they're looking at the heart differently. So notice one of them gets going up. You've got a QRS that's up. You've got a QRS that's down. They're still working normally. It's just that we're looking at two different angles at the heartbeats, picking up two different ways. So they're both normal. It's just easier to read ones that are up. So let's look at that one. Look at this. Do we have a P wave in front of each QRS and a T? P wave in front of each QRS and T? Yes, we do. This is a normal sinus rhythm. If we add up the um, beats per minute, six second strip, add up the Q waves. Now we have 70 beats per minute. Let's look at this one. Do we have a P wave in front of a QRS and a T? And does that follow through on each one? It looks regular. These look like they're nice and even. This is a normal sinus rhythm. Normal sinus because we have a P, Q, R, S, T. What is the beats per minute on this one? Okay, here's a sinus tachycardia rhythm. Is it normal sinus rhythm? Well, let's look. All the way through, I should have a P wave in front of a QRS and a T wave. Notice because it's faster, they're getting closer together, but you can still see them. P wave, QRS, T. P wave, QRS, T. P wave, QRS, T. Now, does it matter that, oh, look, this T wave is a little higher there. Ooh, something's going on, something's wrong. Well, no, it's just a little bit higher than this one, but we still have T waves. So they may not all look exactly the same because when it's reading it, maybe the patient's moving a little bit. Maybe they're breathing in. Things like that will change what the pattern looks like. But we, in essence, though, we still have a PQRST with every one of those. How fast is this heart rate? Beats per minute. How fast is this heart rate? So, if there's something going on with the patient and the EKG tells us it's a live EKG, you can see it on the monitor, and we're not sure what's happening, maybe the patient's going into um, a cardiac lethal rhythm, we always check the patient first and then the leads. Is a patient okay? Is a patient's tolerating this? For example, if a patient's heart rate dropped down to 30 beats per minute, if the patient's fine and sitting up and watching TV, it's obviously not an emergency. But some people would faint on a heartbeat 30 beats per minute. So always check the patient. Is the patient tolerating the rhythm? And then go to your next steps. So let's talk about atrial rhythms. So when the SA node fails to generate an impulse, that's called some kind of a atrial dysrhythmia. So it's not working correctly, atrial dysrhythmia. Most atrial rhythms, pretty much all of them, are not a lethal rhythm. But you need to assess the patient carefully to find out if we need to do something to help the patient. So signs and symptoms of the patient will lead to the treatments. So remember, check the patient. Are they tolerating the uh, rhythm? Let's treat the signs and symptoms. So types of atrial dysrhythmias. We have what's called atrial flutter, something called atrial fibrillation, and supraventricular tachycardia, or SVT, supraventricular tachycardia. So atrial flutter. If we look at this one and we said, all right, I'm going to use my normal steps. I want to see if there's a P wave in front of a QRS and a T wave. So we look at that and we go, well, wow, I can't really tell. Is that the T wave? Well, it looks like a T wave because it follows it. Well, what's this? Well, I don't see a P wave there. Still looks like a T wave. Well, how come this one is down? Oh, look right here. Looks like a T, a T, and a T. Are these P waves or are they T waves? Are these P waves or T waves? Also, look at your QRS. Your QRS is narrow, but you can just tell by looking at this, this is not regular. It's very irregular. Now, 
if you tip this upside down and had it look like a saw, this basically looks like tooth on a saw, saw tooth. So we call this atrial flutter because we can't distinguish T's from P's. They might be there, but we can't distinguish them. So this is not a normal sinus rhythm. We know there's lots of these scenes between some of these QRSs. Here's three of them, here's three of them, there's one, here's three, here's a couple. So this is atrial flutter. A classic sign of atrial flutter is sawtooth. It looks like a sawtooth and it's irregular. It can look very regular if we have the same amount of these P's in here. It could be very regular. But an atrial flutter is not originating from the sinus rhythm. It's like the heart, the atria are just basically fluttering. They're just fluttering away, but once in a while a QRS makes it through. That's why we have QRS made it through. It's doing it a couple times, it made it through. Notice here we have a bunch of them and it made it through. If we added this up, if we added that up and it's going to change every six seconds, it would be a very irregular rhythm. If we had them on the heart monitor, it would say it's 80 beats, and the next second it would say, no, it's going at 90 beats a minute, and 75, and 100. So atrial flutter, sawtooth, it's an abnormal t abnormal abnormality of the atria fluttering and not doing what they're supposed to be doing. We've got too many atrial contractions up there. It's just fluttering. Atrial fibrillation, the heart is fibrillating. We really don't have hardly anything going on there, and it's pretty uh, sick. Notice we can't hardly see a P wave again. Can you tell where the P wave is? These are wide, so it looks like I've got some wide QRS here. There's a big gap in here. It just looks like there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. I can't tell what a P wave is. Is that a P wave? Is this a P wave? This might be a P wave, but is there a T wave right here? What's that little thing right here? This kind of looks normal. These kind of look this one, this one, and this one might be the T wave. Those look like T waves, but what's happening between this? I can't measure a P QRS on here. Here we have three of them. So atrial flutter, flutter I'm sorry, atrial fibrillation is always very irregular. And if you added these up and said 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 60 beats per minute, both this one and atrial flutter, we've got to check the patient. How's the patient tolerating this? Some patients, if it's not enough heartbeats in there, they might feel dizzy. They might feel faint. They might faint. So we have to determine how the patient's tolerating this before we treat it. Some patients tolerate okay. There are patients out there that have atrial flutter atrial fibrillation and it's chronic and they just live with it. It's all right. Others can't do that. Supraventricular tachycardia. Supra means above. Ventricular obviously above the ventricle and it's tachycardia meaning it's over a hundred. Notice this one. It is an example of we have a very fast rhythm it's fast enough that we can't hardly see what's going on. But we know these are QRSs right here. QRS, QRS, QRS. These are all QRSs. So we call it supraventricular because we're not really sure where it's originating from. Sometimes supraventricular tachycardia can look like ventricular tachycardia, VTEC, which is a lethal rhythm. So patients that have VTEC most likely will faint. Most of them will faint unless it's a slow VTEC. These patients with supraventricular tachycardia, you don't want to look at this and go, oh, it's VTEC, let's give them the things you would do for VTEC, and then not be VTEC, it would cause more problems. So. This looks almost like VTAC. It's fast. It's wide. So we say it's supraventricular because we're not really sure where it's coming from, but we know it's not coming from the ventricle. This is not being initiated in the ventricle. So it's happening so fast, so we're not really sure what's going on. Okay, ventricular rhythms. 
When the SA Navy node fails to initiate the impulse, the ventricles will take the responsibility of pacing the heart. So this could come from the bundle of his or the Purkinje fibers. So if this a patient's in a ventricular rhythm, we know it's not a sinus rhythm because it didn't originate there. These rhythms are usually fatal and lethal. So the four that we're going to look at, premature ventricular contraction. That just means the ventricle is contracting ahead of time. There's some cell in there that doesn't want to wait for the normal SA, AV, normal pathway and it wants to do its own thing. Ventricular fibrillation means the ventricle is just fibrillating. It's moving really fast. It's not really functioning. There's no blood that's being um, contracted out of the heart you have really low perfusion. You can have very low perfusion with the next one, ventricular tachycardia. Nothing's contracting correctly. You have no perfusion. Another one is torsades de plomb. This is very common with patients that have low magnesium levels. Um, very common with mothers giving um, birth and they have low magnesium and uh, usually magnesium sulfate will cure torsades. So this is an example of premature ventricular contraction. We have an extra beat coming in that's not normal. Now notice here we have a P, a QRS, and a T. P, QRS, T. But look, this big wide thing in there, that's not normal. And it didn't come in. It came in too early. The normal QRS should have been someplace like right here. This one happened too early. Notice right after that Q, that premature contraction, we have a long pause. The heart resets itself to start a normal sinus rhythm. So here we go. We have QRS, 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 QRS. It's working fine. Whoops, there's another one. We have another premature contraction here. Notice this one is different than this one. We have three, four down here. This one kind of looks like this one, it kind of looks like this one, this one. These all look alike, they look like this one. If they look differently in their morphology, then we know that it's probably coming from two different places. Notice it got normal, there was a pause here, normal, 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 normal. We had an extra one, a premature, it kind of reset itself. There's even a smaller one, that's probably from another one. Normal, normal, so these here too are um, premature. Oh, we have one, two, three, four, five. These are all premature contractions coming from two different places. So it looks like we have one, two, three, four, possibly four different areas it's coming from in the heart. When we have a premature contraction, no blood is leaving the ventricle. So if this was a six second strip and you said what are the beats per minute, it wouldn't be anything here. Nothing is leaving the heart. Those don't count as regular beats. Nothing's happening.